Well, you obviously saw, but uh, once again, this fucking mountain, this damned old mountain, I put a sign on the door here that says, I'll read it to you in a second. Grab me some smokes. Um, I put a sign on the door here that says, Please, what is in this camp is all I have left in this world. I'm out here fighting for my life. Please don't make it any harder on me by stealing from me. If you know me, fire three shots and I will fire one and come a-running. If you're lost or stuck, feel free to wait or borrow what you need. Thanks. Um, you know, just being neighborly and just being cordial. But once again, let me put this beer in the creek. Once again, I get up today and roll up some rollies and, you know, not real motivated today, don't really give a shit, just kind of eh, humdrum, not knowing what I'm going to do with myself, so I decide to head on through this campground and clean up that kids those kids' mess. I knew they, uh, excuse me, probably would have left a mess, and um, so I cruise up and clean that campsite up and uh, excuse me head up the road and hike up probably two two and a half miles see some new stuff and dig on some new stuff and uh, and uh, decide to go back the other way because I didn't want to walk through the creek and come up into the other parking area over here and find this old man 60 some years old fucking in Indian garb, um, just more or less up here communing with nature, man, fucking neat old boy, hard working, you know, fucking construction worker dude, worked his whole damn life, and, um, you know, comes up here, comes up here on a mountain and gets away, and I'm sure most of the people in his life have no clue that, you know, he comes up here and puts on the Indian garb, and and uh, you know, plays his music and communes with nature and drinks a few beers and just has his experience and heads on back down into society to his wife and his, you know, his life. And you know, sixty some years old, works his ass off still, old beater Toyota pickup, and I run across him and just through conversation. I mean, I'm not, I'm not asking for him. Um, asked him what he was smoking, because I, I had one rolly with me, so I figured I'd smoke him out if he's a pot smoker. Asked him what he's smoking, he said, oh, just cigarettes. And I, and I made the comment, yeah, I've used the last of my papers this morning, so I got about five left. Fucking hands me a brand new pack of Tops, which Tops are great papers. Um, you know, hands me a brand new pack of papers, which there is a hundred papers in here. So that's five packs of cigarettes, if I had the tobacco to it go along with it, but I probably got enough tobacco for five or six more, but the point is, is that this damn mountain, man, you sit right here and you ask for what you want, you go hike it off and you'll find it, it's just, a, it's an amazing thing, uh, every time I've ever been down and out, and every time I thought I couldn't go on, I run across something like that. I run across a good old boy out here following his heart. He's out here pounding his drum music and wearing his, I don't know what they're called, but wearing his little, you know, uh, loincloth and got a, it, that, I don't know if you saw the headdress, but the headdress was a band that was cut out of, that was cut out of a baseball hat and he had taken deer skin and put over the top of it and had some feathers and had a uh, there was a chunk of camouflage I'm sure there was a story behind that but I didn't ask him but um, you know the guy's standing out here half naked jamming his jamming his his um, tribal music and drinking some beers and you know I come meandering along and dude gives me not only the tops but he gives me two two nature valley you know, granola bars. And at this point in time, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm not turning down anything. Um, 
if they decide to offer, I'll take them. I'll never ask for anything. Hey, give me one of those. You know, hey, can I get one of those from you? You know, I don't do that. But um, people offer. People give what they have up here. And this damned old mountain, I tell you what, it's given me what I need so far. It's kept me alive. It's kept me warm. It's kept me full. It's kept me in cigarettes. It's kept me in pot. It's pointing me in the direction of peace and happiness. And once again, I go hiking out of here today just to get out of camp, just to do something productive. I didn't want to sit here and just do nothing. So I decided to go hiking around and two, three miles one way and on my way back and going to make some lunch and, you know, settle in for the day and maybe grab a book and do a little reading. But, um, you know, I run across a guy like that, and, and the the papers are nice, the the granola bars are nice, but the companionship. But for me, the big thing with a guy like that is is seeing somebody follow their dream, man. Seeing somebody follow their heart, and come out here and do something that most people would think is crazy, and you know, wear his little fucking loincloth and go, you know, uh, Indian and around the country, but. I just think it's the fucking coolest thing in the world. It just makes me realize that you can follow your dreams and carve out your niche in life and do what makes you happy and be a good person and be helpful and, you know, give a kid something if he needs it and, you know, be a good person and follow your damn dreams. Because half the population bumping into that guy out here would think he's a fucking nut job and go back and talk about, oh, I met this weird fucking Indian dude out here wearing a loincloth and a gun and a knife, you know. That's an Indian, man. That's a guy fucking chasing his heritage. That's a guy keeping his his family's heritage alive. And, and you know, he was an Ez Pierce Indian and obviously a proud man and works hard and takes care of his family and his wife and deals with the political side of life, but he's just thankful to be here. And, Never wants to forget his heritage. Never wants to forget where he came from. And comes out every once in a while to recharge his batteries and come up here and commune with nature. And I love that. I love anybody who's confident and comfortable enough to be who they are. And that's something that I'm learning out here because I tell you what, I mean, a guy like Ed. That's a guy who's comfortable and confident enough to be who he is. And he's a good man, he's a good person, he's a good dad, he's a good father, he learns from his mistakes, he tries again. You know, this last heart attack and how he quit smoking, and I know he's done. How he quit smoking and started doing everything with Seth. I mean, that's, that's the greatest gift he could do. It's the greatest thing that guy could do in the world is do what he's doing right now, and, and he just keeps himself busy, sure he wants to smoke, sure he probably misses drugs, sure he probably misses this and that, but he keeps himself busy and gets out of life what he wants and gives back everything he has, and that man will give you the shirt off his back. And, you know, for him to take the time that he has now and give to Seth and, you know, give Seth a heritage that he can come out into the woods and commune with later because every time that boy gets on a bike for the rest of his life, he's going to remember his dad. He's going to remember it. My dad did it. My dad could do it. I can do it. And dad wanted me to go up this road and I was scared, but I did it and it worked out and it was okay. And that that's being a man. That's the measure of a man. And it's amazing. It's moving. Um, I could take my coat off and show you goosebumps because I didn't know that's everything that I was looking for out here. And every time I need it, I find it. Every time I have it, I give it. And it's it's mind-boggling to me how how this old mountain gives back and how this old mountain has shown me in ways I could have never learned anywhere else. This old mountain showed me that you be a good person and you'll get good in return. And I don't feel two shakes worth of bad about the things I've said or the, what I've gone through up here. I'm not embarrassed. I don't care if anybody sees it. <coughs> and I'm 
learning the lessons that I needed to learn. I should have done this 15 years ago when I left. I should not have went to Vegas and the motorhome and the fucking gambling and the running around and the strip joints and the massage parlors and all that crap. I should not have done that. I should have come up to this old mountain. I should have sat my ass down and read a book and slowed down and got my head clear and figured out what I was responsible for and what I wasn't and what opportunities I had in life and come back and spent 10 good years with my dad. But I didn't do that. I ran and hid. And I'm not running and hiding up here. You can't hide up here. You cannot fucking hide. You can't smoke enough weed to make yourself forget that you're up here and you're doing what you're doing. So, I just think it's really fucking cool, man. That old man up here chasing his heart. You know, keeping his dream alive. Keeping his heritage alive. Keeping his everything alive. It's just, it's moving. It really is moving. So, I'm going to turn this off, run out, hit the solar panel, see what we got for juice. Um, build a little fire and I'm going to make me a grilled ham and cheese. I forgot about that canned ham I got. I'm going to slice that up and give me some give me some meat. Um, put the rest of it in the fridge. Our creek's still running by, but I've seen a lot of creeks up there that were running strong two weeks ago and they're dry now. So, um, old man gave me a pack of papers. Old man gave me papers. I sat right here two, three hours ago, rolled up my last smokes, my last papers, and this old man comes rolling through the woods and gives me a damn pack of papers. I'll tell you what. So... Uh, I just, I'm overwhelmed. I'm like, you know, it's, it's, it's just amazing to me the, the stuff that you miss when you're only looking in one direction. I've only been looking backwards my whole life. I've only been trying to fix crap that didn't need to be fixed or couldn't be fixed or wasn't my job to fix. And when I couldn't fix it, it made me heartbroken. It broke my heart. So I laid down and died. And I don't want to die no more. I don't want to lay down and die. That's why I drug my ass out of camp. That five... That three or four or five mile hike I made this morning gave me so much more than some rolling papers, a couple beers, and a couple of fucking nature bars. It gave me hope. It gave me faith. It gave me the will to try. And that's all you need, and that's all I've been missing, is the will to try. I didn't see the point. I didn't see the purpose. I didn't see the reason. I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. I was too busy looking backwards. And yesterday's gone, man. It's gone. Today's a new day. What you need is available. And the more and more I sit out here, the more and more that's becoming part of me. And that's something that I've never had inside me. And I feel like a million bucks. All right, three trillion bucks. You know, once again, that guy's up here doing that. I'm up here needing this. And I tell you what, I've got a huge plan in my heart to later on in life when things settle down for me to make regular trips up this mountain and help the people that are up here. You know, maybe buy 10 pounds of tobacco and endless supply of papers and food and meat and bacon and eggs and sausage and, you know, just stuff and uh, drive up this road and see who's up here and see what they need. That's something that's really important to me. Because right now I don't have a lot to give. I don't have a lot to give. When these guys help me out, I can't really return the favor. 
put karmically and in the big picture, I really can. It would be awesome to jump in my rig and cruise up here with a cooler full of eggs and bacon and sausage and, you know, hamburger meat and just come up here and hand it out. You know, maybe a little smokes, maybe a little weed, maybe a little this and that. You know, some bottles of cheap booze and give the gift of happiness to people. Give them something they don't have. Make their journey up here a little bit better. Make their experience a little bit better. I can see doing that the rest of my life because this mountain saved my life. And the people on this mountain saved my life. And the people that are drawn to this mountain saved my life. Because I don't know what I was going to do a week and a half ago. I don't know if I could have pulled that trigger. But I don't know if I could have stayed out here any longer without help. And the help that I lined up didn't come. So new help showed up. And it's just amazing to me that... You just can't even imagine how easy... You just can't even imagine how easy it is... To get and to give the things that you need. Everybody that's given me something up here couldn't afford to do it. Everybody that's given me something up here works for minimum wage. They're cooks and they're call center employees and they're fucking, you know, eight, ten dollar an hour people that save their money for weeks and weeks and weeks to be able to come up here. And they buy a carton of smokes and they just hand me one. Boom, eight bucks. They just give it away. You don't have to ask. You don't have to give them nothing in return. They just give it away. And obviously, I'm that same type of person because I've been given what I had away my whole life. But I gave it away so people would like me. Now I want to give it away because people need it. And I can make their day a little bit better. And that's what's important to me. That is what is important to me. And whether I come off this hill or I don't, I mean, I could stay here forever. You bring me a woman, God, mountain, bring me a woman and we'll stay. We'll do the Adam and Eve thing and we'll fucking... Live the good life. <coughs> and when it's ready to go back into town, we'll go back into town. When it's ready to hit, when we're ready to hit a drive-through, we'll do that. But it's just. just good shit. It's just good stuff, man. So, we're going to crank out a little fire, do some grilled ham and cheese. we got a little bit of bread left, so uh, we'll get to that before it gets moldy. Do a little ham and cheese, do a little Ritz crackers, maybe eat a Nature Valley Nutri-Grain bar. So, that's it. That's our update. And uh, spent the uh, spent the afternoon with Engine Bob. So, fuck, I love it up here. I'll see you later.